Hello everybody, this is The Pocket Passer. I'm your host, Randy White. I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. I know I am. It is time for Randy's Ranks. Starting off with number 10, Seattle Seahawks. They're a very nice, well-rounded team. They've got an exciting young defense. They fly around, they go, and they hit you at the point of attack. They're athletic, they're young, they're fast, they've got loads of energy, and they make plays. Witherspoon is phenomenal. Tariq Woolen was great last year. He's still good. They've got pieces all over the place, veteran leadership in the right spots, and a great head coach in Pete Carroll. On the offensive side of the ball, talent all over the place. They run the ball, they pass the ball well. Geno Smith, great at making off-schedule plays as well. There's a lot to like about this Seattle Seahawks team. Kind of an ugly win they were coming off of against the Arizona Cardinals. It happens. It's the NFL. It's every given Sunday. I'm not going to overreact to one game. Obviously, you're going to hear me say that a lot. You've heard me say that a lot. Overreaction is the key to making bad takes. So, not going to overreact. The Seahawks are a good football team. They're pretty much hanging out right where I had them last. Right at 10, I think, is where they belong right now. Number nine, the Detroit Lions. I had them at four. They got the doors blown off of them by a much better team in the Baltimore Ravens. It was clear. They out them. They out-schemed them. They outran them. They outplayed them at every corner. Lamar Jackson had no answers for him. He was phenomenal, and he is emerging as an MVP candidate. Lions had no answer defensively. And then on the offensive side of the ball, Jared Goff, under pressure, under duress constantly. The Ravens had 28 points before the Lions had a first down. That is not a recipe for success, obviously. I trust this Lions coaching staff. I love their coaching staff. I love a lot of what they do. I love a lot of their personnel. Their defense has played great this year, with the exception of Sunday. Their offense has played great this year, with the exception of Monday. They're going to get back to the drawing board, get back to what they're good at, figure out what went wrong, self-scout their weaknesses, and they're going to be just fine. They're going to run away with the NFC North. Don't overreact. But I had to drop in places. You can't get beat by 32 points in the NFL and still be considered a top five team. So had to drop them. They belong at nine right now. Number eight, the Dallas Cowboys. All right, they're coming off their bye week. They've been great. Their losses, a blowout loss to a San Francisco 49ers team that was on fire and a tough loss against the Arizona Cardinals who were feeling themselves that day. Cowboys came out, drove the ball into the red zone, and then just couldn't execute. They're a very good football team. A loaded roster on both defense and offense. Micah Parsons is a top three edge rusher in the NFL and really a top three defensive player in the NFL. It's between, in my opinion, him, Miles Garrett, and TJ Watt. Those are the three best defensive players in the league right now. He's unbelievable. There's so much talent all over that football team. Dak Prescott can ball. I don't trust him in big games late, but to suggest that he's some scrub and that he can't play football would be a huge misstep on my part. He's a good quarterback, and he's perfectly capable, capable of getting you wins. So the Cowboys are going to be very good all year. I picked them to win the division. Let's see how the Eagles do during this tough stretch that they have ahead of them. Cowboys are very good. Loaded roster. Don't necessarily love their coaching staff. They're not good at time management. Late in games, they don't seem to do a whole lot that makes sense to me. But they get the job done thanks to the team they have around Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy. And number seven, another team I had to drop a good chunk of points for a disappointing loss. Not nearly as disappointing as the Lions loss, but at number seven, the Buffalo Bills. They just had an embarrassing loss against the 1-5 and New England Patriots. Patriots led by 12 in the fourth. Bills come storming back, take the lead, just to have New England score again. Rough sight for Buffalo. Mac Jones, not only does he get them in game time field goal position, but... They go a step further, and they win the game outright on a last-second touchdown to Mike Gesicki. The Gesicki gritty we all got to witness. That's always fun to see. Mac Jones was terrific. I think he was, what, 25 out of 30 
for a lot of yards and a game-winning touchdown, just to name a few pieces of his stat. He was phenomenal. The Bills' defense needs to get things cleaned up. You can't give up 29 points to a New England Patriots offense that has looked nothing short of horrible all season long. It's just not acceptable. Bills' offense... They need to clean it up. I don't know what it is. I don't know if Josh Allen's screwing up. I haven't stepped in, stepped into the uh, film and taken a good look. A lot of what I'm hearing is uh, inconsistent run game. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like you're asking Josh Allen to win you the football game by touching the ball on every single play and actually being the guy that the play is going through on every single play. I think I saw a stat. It was something like 75% of plays involve Josh Allen either running or passing that's not sustainable football. You need supporting cast to pick up some of the slack, take the pressure off Josh Allen. He's amazing. He's a phenomenal football player. But if you ask him to win on every down for you, it's not a recipe for success. Other guys have to be able to get involved. It's the only way to win football games in this league. It's too tough. Number six, Jacksonville Jaguars. I had them out of my top ten. My bad. They're a good football team. They beat the Bills. They got a nice win against the Saints. Yes, I know. Foster Moreau dropped a game-tying touchdown. The Jaguars look good. Trevor Lawrence went out, got it done. He's starting to pick up his play. It's progressively getting better as the season goes on. I should have seen this coming because the same thing happened last year. Jack started off tough. They went on a big win streak, found themselves in the playoffs, found themselves competing against the Chiefs, in the ASC Divisional Round, this is a good football team that's going to continue to get better. Calvin, Calvin Ridley is going to continue to be more involved. I know he wasn't very involved and hasn't been very involved since Week 1. Christian Kirk was great. They run the ball. Etienne is great. That defense has playmakers on it. They're going to continue to compete. They're a good football team. I really like what I'm seeing from the Jacksonville Jaguars sitting at 5-2. Number five, the Miami Dolphins. They're still a great football team, all right? First in rushing, heading into this week. First in passing, first in scoring, scored 70 points on an opponent. This is a very good football team. You don't go around and just completely bully and humiliate teams that are not quite as good as you, or I mean way worse than them. But still, it's the NFL, and it's supposed to be any given Sunday. You don't go around and straight up bully other teams in the NFL every single week unless you are still a very good football team yes they are zero and two against teams with winning records yes they haven't beat a team with a winning record in over a year all right i understand that those are concerns the philadelphia eagles flat out out physical them on damn near every play that's a concern that's why i have them at five that's why they lost to the eagles on sunday night they are a finesse team they use speed and scheme to beat you. If you punch them in the mouth, they take a step back. They need to figure that out. They need to be able to have a little more physicality in their game if they want to be able to beat the big dogs. I think they can compete with teams less physical, more finesse type teams that don't have the personnel to, to fire off the ball and force you back. Tua has had the luxury of not being sacked very often this year. He was sacked four times on Sunday night. When he is sacked more than twice, the Dolphins do significantly worse in the win-loss column than when he is not sacked more than twice. So they protect him. They're good. The problem is when you have an offensive line that isn't elite like the Dolphins and you have to play teams like the Eagles that have an elite pass rush, you're going to get sacked more than twice. Can you overcome it? Dolphins couldn't Sunday night. They're at five. Number four, another team. Seems like all my big teams had disappointing losses. Another team with a disappointing loss on Monday night, the San Francisco 49ers. Good Lord, I did not see that coming at all. I was filming the last episode that uploaded sometime last night, and... It was literally like a minute before kickoff. I was finishing up the recording and I said pretty much that the Vikings were going to, the Vikings losing would help out my horrible week in predictions since I had done so poorly. 
and it made it worse because the Vikings somehow got a win. Kirk Cousins was fantastic. <laughs> Enough about the Vikings, though. The 49ers clearly hit a lull. Their offense now in back-to-back -back weeks, they said, hey, we're going to take the running game away, make Brock Purdy beat us with his arm. He's thrown, he's thrown two bad picks now in the Vikings game. That was rough. I'm not bailing on Brock Purdy. He's in concussion protocol as we speak. It looks like Sam Darnold is en route to start this Sunday against the Bengals. Bengals need a win badly at 3-3. Three and three. The Niners are a great team with a great roster. Trent Williams is going to be back. Debo Samuel is going to be back. Christian McCaffrey, 16 straight games with a touchdown. They're great. I'm not worried, but... They gotta get they gotta get in the film. They gotta figure out what's happening here. How how do we just drop we're supposed to be the best team in the league? How do we just drop two straight games to teams we should have beat? The Niners have to play some good teams down the stretch. This is how you lose the first round by. You gotta beat teams you're supposed to beat. Back to back weeks now, the Niners haven't done that. And also, what was that play call? On the last play of the half, or not the last play of the half, but the Jordan Addison touchdown with 15 seconds to go in the half. What are we doing? The Vikings are out of timeouts. They're well shy of midfield. And you put everyone in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Why? Steve Wilkes, why? Why would you do that? All you have to do is not get beat deep. If they get tackled in bounds and it's a big gainer, the likelihood is... The clock runs out. At the very worst, you give up a field goal if they get some insane play and get out of bounds. Don't get beat over top, or in this case, have one guy that you're depending on to make a tackle. He plays the ball because the ball was thrown to him. Not a good throw by Kirk Cousins, who I gave credit to. He played great. That was not one of his great plays. Jordan Addison got his get back from the interception against Traverius Ward earlier in the game. He rips the ball out of his hands, and oh, I called zero, so now there's no one back there to make a tackle. If you call a too high, some kind of a too high formation, I don't care if it's four, two, whatever coverage you want to throw out there, it's better than zero. I understand that you want to get pressure, but right now I don't care about a sack. I just want to play out in front, make them throw it in front of me, and then tackle them inbounds and end the half. If you have, if they have timeouts, that's one thing, but they had no timeouts. There's no reason to call that play. It blows my mind that they thought that was a good idea to call a zero blitz when they've got speedsters on the outside. Cousins just throws an effort pass because why not? If anything, it's an arm punt and the 49ers go into the half and it's the same score. You're not going to get a field goal. That's been predetermined by the coverage and by the play call that was called by the Vikings. What happens? No one back there to make a play on Addison. Once he gets past the first guy, Walk-in touchdown. That's why you don't do that. This is NFL 101. I mean, come on. Terrible play call. Terrible situational awareness. That's why the 49ers are sitting where they're at. This game, That game would have gone very differently had they not managed to score at the end of the half the way they did. So they got to get that cleaned up. Situational awareness is key to winning football games. You can't be giving up touchdowns with, against a team with no timeouts over the middle of the field like that at the end of halves. That's how you lose football games. Number three, a team that showed out on Sunday, big time, the Baltimore Ravens. They were phenomenal against the Detroit Lions, a team I had ranked at four previously. They got their just heads kicked in by the Ravens. Lamar Jackson, an MVP candidate now. He's probably my vote for MVP as we stand right now. He was unbelievable He's continued to get progressively better throughout the year. That offense is starting to warm up to the new scheme with the new offensive coordinator. The defense looked great against one of the highest powered offenses in the NFL. They didn't they held the Lions to zero first downs through the majority of the first half. That is unbelievable. That is insane. The Ravens just dominated that game and it was 38 to 6, but it was worse. Than 38 to 6. Like the Ravens could have, they was 28 to nothing at halftime. The Ravens could have scored a hell of a lot more than 38 points. 
I can promise you that. Unbelievable performance by the Ravens. They deserve getting moved up into the top three. They might be the best team in the AFC. I don't have them there quite yet, but a lot to like and a lot to be excited about if you're a Ravens fan, as long as they don't play the Steelers in the playoffs. All right? Steelers are in the playoffs right now. Steelers kind of have Lamar's number. If they don't play them, should be fun. Also, if the receivers catch like they did on Sunday, should be fun. Number two, a team I had probably a little too low last week. Should have known better than to doubt the current Kings, the reigning NFL champions. Number two, Kansas City Chiefs. They were phenomenal on Sunday. They dominated the Chargers. Their defense, well, it was a competitive game for the first half. The defense stepped up in the second half, put a shutout on the board. The one good drive the Chargers had to get into the red zone ended in a forced interception thanks to a batted ball. And after that, Chargers incapable of getting anything going. Chiefs' offense looked alive. They got shut down a little bit in the second half. They scored a late touchdown to put it away. But they were terrific. 24 first-half points. Mahomes threw for well over 400 yards. Travis Kelsey looked great. Receivers stepping up. They're starting to put it together, and you're starting to see the explosive part of the offense come to life. Marquez Valdez-Scantling had a big play or two. If they can get that flow going, it was a talented Chargers defense. Granted, not well coached, but a talented Chargers defense. They put up a ton of yards on them. Chiefs are very good. We all knew that they were Super Bowl favorites coming into the year. That hasn't changed on the AFC side. No doubt about that. The AFC, of course, runs through Arrowhead Stadium. They are in line to get the first round by. I expect it to stay that way. Number one, a team that dominated. And I mean dominated. The team I had put at two. It was only a 14-point loss, but it was worse than that, if we're being real. Let's take a look at the box score here, and you're going to see total yards. Eagles outgained them by 111 yards. Passing yards. Eagles outgained them once again by over 50 yards. Rushing yards. They held the number one rushing offense to less than 50 rushing yards. The number one passing offense to less than 200 yards. Number one in yards per play to just 5.1. That was domination. First downs, more than double. Third down efficiency, they both had four conversions. Eagles actually had a slightly worse percentage, but four for four on fourth down, all on brotherly shoves. The Eagles did what they do, they dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Best offensive line in the league. Top three defensive line in the league. And they just put it to the Dolphins on every play. You're not going to run the ball on us. Tyreek's going to have to run past us very quickly because we're getting to the quarterback. And they got to the quarterback. Rattled Tua, hit him, sacked him four times, tied for the most he's been sacked, all season, he was sacked four times against the Bills as well. That high-powered Miami offense was held to 10 points. Impressive performance by the Eagles defense. I didn't think their corners could hang. They did more than that. Big play slay came up huge. They shut down that Miami passing game, only 200 yards allowed, and they only gave up the one touchdown pass for Tua just through a Beautiful ball to a streaking Tyreek Hill that ran by all of his guys. And by the way, Eagles, they're number one. They just traded for Kevin Byard. Look out, NFL. That is a nice replacement for Edmonds, who they sent over to Tennessee. If the Eagles win the Super Bowl this year, Jason Kelsey talked about this on his new Heights podcast with Travis Kelsey. That's a great podcast if you enjoy listening to NFL players talk football, I highly recommend the New Heights podcast. It's a lot of fun to listen to. I like listening to it when I'm at work sitting at my desk. So I recommend that podcast. But Jason Kelsey talked about how great, well, Travis Kelsey was talking about how great Kevin Byard is. And Jason Kelsey was talking about how if they win the Super Bowl this year, they got to send a big 
thank you note to the Tennessee Titans. I completely agree. That's my top 10. Let's review it real quickly. At 10, the Seattle Seahawks. 9, the Lions. 8, Cowboys. 7, Bills. 6, Jaguars. 5, Dolphins. 4, 49ers. 3, Ravens. 2, Chiefs. And 1, Eagles. That's all I got for you guys. If you want to check out my content on all of my social media pages, I've got an Instagram and a TikTok where I post. I've been pretty frequently active on both of those accounts. So go ahead and follow me over there. If you want to be subscribed to the Pocket Passer, go ahead and show your support and hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos on this channel, go ahead and hit that bell icon to get notifications turned on. I appreciate all of you for watching. Thank you all so much. I will see all of you in the next video.